us, you couldn't even change it to a page a day. <laughs> That's where the fucking shit as well, because they said they were going to call the police and they didn't. They never fucking do. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, folks. And you can hear us this time. Yay, amazing. Woo! We've got good quality microphones, yes. which is nice. Not Round of applause one. for sound quality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew it was so important in a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're beautiful, so that should be enough for you people. But <laughs> Even you audio listeners. Yeah, we'll give, we'll give you some. So yeah, you can hear our beauty regardless. Uh, how are you feeling since we've been back from LA? Feeling... Blue. <laughs> Feeling blue, yeah. Don't want to be here. Yeah, no, LA was amazing, man. LA was so good. What a city. Yeah, you, as a first explorer in LA, really lived it up I to went, the full. I saw every facet of that city. You did. Literally, I went downtown, Hollywood, Crenshaw, South Central, Cape in, Town, Inwood, <laughs> in Cape Wood. Town. Everything, yeah, we we really done it all. And you had the best tour guide in the world. Oh my god! Shout out Jenny, Shout our out girl. Cats by Jenny. Yes. What a freaking babe! Honestly, we had the best time. The Korean spa was amazing. I am so gutted. I was so tired. Yeah. I, I couldn't. The thought of schlepping to K Town at like ten p.m. when I got home, I was like, No, you've been a little birthday bean. I've and been a birthday bean. Yeah, yeah. you've been like socializing. I know. Hardcore. Look at me. I'm very impressed. I know, right? Yeah. 35 is just the new 25 for me. I just, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's like fresher, reborn. more richer, <laughs> not as deranged. Mm, yeah. Yeah. There's definitely deranged. Yeah, but meant. it's not, I feel like um, when you're in your 20s, the derangedness is more of an outpour than an inside deranged. Yeah. I was definitely a more outwardly. I definitely bear a holding my crazy, <laughs> yeah, exactly. crazy cards to my yeah. chest nowadays. Yeah. Would... But yeah, and it was so good. The work was amazing, but the birthday, the birthday fun was so good. Yeah. Benny Hanna was good. You like yeah. your Benny Hanna? <laughs> Benny Hanna is just like, a spoons with a griddle in it yeah it's crazy yeah i actually loved it though it was really it was good. funny the sake was banging though yeah i, I, got, I, I got a bit sake drunk there yeah you had, did had a good time yeah <laughs> no it was good fun and yeah i got to see literally everything even down to like the hollywood sign walk of fame the last day i think i did the most yeah you got it all in yeah you were like fuck we then it was come pick me <laughs> up it was like <laughs> right like, we've been partying yeah, for two weeks we yeah, need to get the exactly. sights in let's do k-town jajamyan then straight to the hollywood sign walk of fame eat up we had a butter cake at some pizza place what's which a was butter real. cake bro it's like the most dang cool cake you could ever have it's like the like pink school cakes but like what like on Tottenham crud. cake? Yeah, it's like that, but it's like super softer, like really moist. My mouth is literally watering. Um, it's got like little sugar bits in it, so mm. it like crunches. Mm. But it's Textural like it's experience. just really buttery and delicious. So that was a highlight of the trip. <laughs> the trip. Um, and then yeah, from there we went to the Korean spa, and the Korean spa was just literally like a titty man. Like, how is there canteen? Yeah, the Koreans, they do spas differently. They know their I stuff. I haven't been to the one in LA, but I did go to the one in Seoul and like... I mean, that's the, but the motherland, isn't from it? From talking to Jenny about it, though, she said like they're very similar, like the the basis of it, you know, like the blueprint. Yeah. There's like all of those like pool spas, hot rooms. Yeah, which will be like room. gendered and then the, the massive room is the co-ed bit. Yeah, yeah. it's just like a big hot floor and everyone yeah. just like hangs out everyone's I fucking just love that snoozing room. and then there's like a little there was like a little bit with some computers that all the kids was playing on and then there's like the little canteen bit and the food was, was laying bruv and to be honest with you it's probably one of the cheaper eats in <clears throat> la because like was it included in the price of the thingy no but was so i think all together it was like 30 dollars for like four hours and then That's we paid nothing. 58 bucks for the food for two people. That's nothing. And we were like stuffed, but we'd been eating all day as well. And so. then American sizes as well. They Bruh. Because that's the thing that fucks you up because it's like, obviously it is more expensive, but the portions is like, yeah. this is going to feed me all day. 
I don't want to eat the same thing all day though. Yeah, it's you true. I mean? But I think what's nice about it is like if you munch that and then you have your tea and then later on when you've had a little toot <laughs> and or a little nibble on a little eddy and you just want to have a little snack, it's like you've got that there good to go yeah that's very true yeah the leftover game is strong yeah and you get your money's worth you so could certainly get your money's worth it's not like some round here you get fucking some of the portion sizes you're like for the price you pay as well why am i paying 12 pound for three grains of rice and a piece of sweet sour chicken or i'm paying five pound for a sausage roll literally it's not even no longer than 10 centimeters yeah exactly <laughs> yeah I love how you got the fucking measuring thing out. Yeah, I was like, this I is not what it should be. <laughs> That's Broadway market. No, because it's even with the um, the drinks and that, because I was like, sheesh, when we was going to the bars, I was like, it's expensive, but them things the get d- you licked off your heads. An American shot is a completely different size to a British shot. Yeah, because they've... I it's like half to, a pint, yeah. literally. Sometimes, like, a double yeah. shot is, like, literally half a pint yeah, of fucking Yeah, because I spoke to, like, one of one, the first bar I think uh, Desi and Belza took us to, like, this little dive bar. I asked the guy, because he bartended in the UK, and I was like, what's the size comparison? One shot in America is four shots here. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah, you definitely get your money's worth. Yeah, if you, I had two drinks, and I was howling. My goodness, could you imagine? <laughs> Literally. I could never. But yeah, it was absolutely amazing. And it was, yeah, it was just really such a special experience to have your birthday out there and to be there for that particular time was so cool. And then, like, just chilling in the hot tub and... All right, Mills. <laughs> for anyone listening just on audio, my dog is just, like, digging up the sofa, if you can hear that. It's interrupting the podcast. There ain't Sorry. nothing there, baby. Sorry. She's trying to dig her way to Australia. <laughs> How did the jet lag hit you? Because it always hits me so bad on the way back. I was mash up. <laughs> felt so weird. I felt really, really strange. I think I'm only really feeling like normal this week. Like Yeah, like the last probably like three to four days yeah. I've been feeling normal again. Yeah, but it's, it took a minute because it really wasn't that bad. The sleeping, getting to sleep <sighs> when you come home Sheesh. is horrible. Yeah, because it's you just... I mean, I'm a person that I always want to sleep when I'm not supposed to anyway. <laughs> like, I'm tired now <laughs> at 4pm when it's, like, blazing outside. But then come three in the morning, I'm like, Ding. I want to learn how to play the piano. <laughs> like, I'm going to take up a new language. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Duolingo. Um, so, yeah, I felt really, really strange. But to be honest with you, yeah, I mean, I feel strange anyway, so... right. It's What's not, new? Yeah, not too Nothing. out of ordinary. Not too out of ordinary at all. No, it is nice to be home though. I really miss the girls. I miss the babies. Yeah. I miss the puppies. Yeah, by the end of it, I was like, all right, I need the animals now. Yeah, you do really miss your animals mm. when you're gone. Like the first week, I can kind of get my head down and get on with it. But the second week, then like the thoughts yeah. really. And I start scrolling in the albums. Yeah. And like, oh, look at them. And it's because it's more like, I don't know, just having that little cuddle bug in bed. Yeah. And because like- Being in bed alone is horrible. So really treacherous, honestly. I right? think it's a scam. And we're scam. not used to that. <laughs> it's yeah, a it's a freaking scam. scam. We've always got a little beanie in there. Yeah, because I've either, all, like Reg always sleeps in the bed, always tucked under the covers or on the nope. pillow with me. Princess and then, in the pee over yeah, there. and then my other cat Colin will just like come and you know pop a squat somewhere and like cozy in a little nook or cranny. So I usually have like three animals in the bed with me. Yeah, I've got always a minimum of three. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have Maggie and Mildred. They sleep on top of the covers. Like Mildred, she'll sleep like squished into the side of me like we spoon mm, and then oh, Maggie Maggie's just like she's like a cat she's at like the end of the bed yeah and then Frog my cat <laughs> I don't know that's confusing <laughs> the way you said that Frog my cat <laughs> she sleeps she has her own pillow and she sleeps under like in the pillowcase yeah so it's like her own bed on the bed yeah and she loves that <laughs> but sometimes she wants to get in but like 
I do like a cuddle, but I sleep naked and there's something about, like, I don't want an animal pressed up against me, my naked body. Yeah, it feels like, a bit Like, don't uncouth. get me wrong. When I'm, like, sometimes I'll pull my top up and I'll put, like, the dog on my belly. So we have, like, belly to belly skin. Yeah. Because that's but, like, nice. Be, yeah. But, but not, I don't want to be, na- yeah, yeah it's stark a bit, naked feels a bit, yeah. with the cat, like, feels under a bit the covers. Yeah, yeah, no. So I'm like, you yeah. in your own bit. And because the frog is naked as well. <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah, so it's just, just like... Just a line of mother and daughter can't cross. Yeah, I just think it's a bit weird, to be honest with you. But um, I don't like dogs. I like, this is... Quite, like, anyone can do what they want, obviously. But yeah. for me, like, I don't like the dogs under the covers. Really? No, nah, that just... It fucking weirds me out. <laughs> I love Reg going under the covers. It's like a little... Water, I love water, the water. idea of it. Like, us being all yeah. cute. Sometimes, like, in the morning, Mildred will come up to, like, where my neck is yeah and i'll like put the cover over her yeah, sometimes yeah. she'll make her way off the duvet um that i don't mind sometimes but it's also oh, i just it, yeah it weirds me out but i'm a, like a a crumb nazi yeah you get really yeah a crumb if i can feel if i can't feel anything but like smooth soft clean sheet on my naked body yeah. <laughs> when I'm sleeping like I get fucked but the thing is you sleep naked though innit yeah. I wear pyjamas yeah like unless it's like really hot cause I just well, fucking I actually, love I a wear, pair of PJs I wear um, pyjamas in the summer sometimes cause I sleep on top of the covers but you know the mosquitoes yeah can't just be sleeping out here yeah. naked you can see where you've been naked cause they'll, they'll come just and get lick you. off that one spot yeah and I can't be giving myself up to the mosquitoes yeah Bill Gates ain't gonna get me <laughs> like that <laughs> Bill Gates you ain't having a DNA yeah <laughs> he's probably already got it his, his mosquitoes <laughs> have come after me already <laughs> some of them have definitely got back to the homestead yeah I've killed most of them well them LA mozzies they're definitely Bill Gates' <gasps> oh, boys thanks for saving me from that fucking Bill Gates Bro, mosquito in LA I was like right on oh, my fucking beautiful yeah. face no that was a piss take though right violation and he must have just stuck in the tip yeah and before you got him off <laughs> before you got him off me um <laughs> it's oh still Lord. it's still left like yeah, a little itchy he got, lump. he got a little yeah. a little taste he fucked it up and yeah. slipped it in <laughs> consent is key right yeah Asshole. bill gates <laughs> <laughs> wherever you are right <laughs> somewhere buying up farmland anyway that's way too <laughs> fucking serious for this podcast <laughs> um how's the week been this is like the first normal week since we've been back in it yeah to be honest <clears throat> i've just been having a very wholesome time mm. i got home and I chilled for a few days and then my dad came here. So I've just been oh, chilling yeah, with my dad. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. You've just been gaffing it out, having yeah. a wartime munch. <laughs> exactly. He's been eating wartime food and yeah. having wartime chat. Clogging up the arteries. <laughs> oh, my God. Literally, I feel so, like, heavy from all of the, like, red meat. Because my dad's like a... My dad's a lamb man. He's yeah. like, let's roast some meat. Oh, oh I do love lamb, though. Yeah, no, don't get me wrong. It's yeah, delicious. Yeah, but not every day. But also, it's like, he'll... So he'll make a few things... But he'll make it in like lard. bulk. Yeah. Yeah, he'll make it. <laughs> he'll cook it in lard and you'll be bare. The, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he made Scotch eggs, for example, right? Yeah. And they were amazing. Like my dad can cook, yeah. like, but he made like 10 of them and there's two of us. And he was like, yeah, it'll last us the week. I'm like, I'm thinking I'm not eating this egg I'm not after eating today. A, a Scotch egg every day for a week. Literally. And then he made this like huge <laughs> roast lamb and it was like, oh yeah, we can just have leftovers for the rest. And I was just like... I'm That's not die. how it works in this day and age. <laughs> and can't. you know, I think it is a better way to eat, but that's just... Listen, we got delivery boo boo. That's what I'm trying to we say. Have something different for every meal of the day, <laughs> let alone eating but, the same meal every week. Look, while... my, my dad is 83, 84. He was born when world like as world war Two was unfolding yeah so it's like things like waste and shit like that yeah he just don't can't, fuck with none of that yeah. yeah like he'll be scraping the mold off and be like it's fine i'm like mold oh, grows down not. my tummy's felt funny for days yeah <laughs> you know bit but, of metal be good for you yeah yeah um, but no it's been really fun like we've been having a blast and my dad loves a drink and we he has a drink i get stoned and we just chat about old times yeah I also FaceTime my auntie, who I haven't spoken to in like 20 years. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, that was really sick. Yeah. Um, So she was married to my uncle, who's my dad's brother. Um, But yeah, that was so cool. So I think I'm going to like meet up with 
that side of the family a bit more this year because they live in Canada. So I haven't like been, I haven't really like known them since I was a kid. Kid. Yeah. So that would be. Really oh, that's exciting. exciting. Yeah, no, it's I nice. It's that been that a really you. wholesome week. Yeah, that's what super What about nice. you, babe? I know you were at this comedy competition last night, which you absolutely yeah, slayed. You had me roaring on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, it was fucking sick, lads. Uh, to be fair, it was really good. Um, so it's a LGBT com- yes, LGB- comedy comp. Yeah, LG is the Comedy Bloomers LGBT plus new comedian of the year. Um, so That's a tongue twister. I, yeah, I think the last year I don't. They didn't do it last year. I think the last year they did it was twenty twenty two. I mean, I've done Comedy Bloomers as a gig anyway. It's like really lovely, like supportive room. The queer gigs usually are a bit more supportive and a bit more like fun to like experiment and try things but last night like because I, I didn't really think I was going to go through because it was a really good lineup like it and it was wasn't it like yeah well I only saw the last five acts yeah. but it was so good yeah it was the standard was great and because what's nice about that competition is like there was a drag queen like um like on the lineup doing stand-up and stuff like that and there was like it wasn't just straight stand up. There was like actual like cabaret performers and people who normally do like very types of performance. So that's quite nice because sometimes the straight stand up all night can be a bit like. Oh. And by that you mean like just straight talking. Yeah. 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 And also <laughs> not straight people. Yeah. <laughs> they no, were, the straights they are were all banned. Right. Yeah. They were banned from the stage yeah, last night, they, and yeah. so they should be. Yeah. Exactly. Well, there's some like queer nights that have allies i'm doing a queer night next week called lgbt he he um with chris hall and that's at the two brewers in clapham and they usually have it's like queer people and allies nice. so like you know you, you can be straight but you better be a fucking nice one yeah, yeah. and you better be funny yeah you better be funny <laughs> you better be really don't be hearing funny. nothing about the one time you tripped on mushrooms boo boo because <laughs> we all been there and we heard it <laughs> but um but yeah no it was really amazing so um the semi-finals is going to be in May. Um, they're going to let me know whether I've got the 15th or the 22nd of May. Um, obviously, I'll post about that as well. So if anybody wants to come down, support is always welcome. Sick. And then um, hopefully I'll make it to the final. Yeah, you will, baby. We'll be there cheering. Yeah. So. I love how my neighbours decided to do like DIY while we... Did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah, hopefully you guys can't hear that. <laughs> but if you didn't work it out already, we're actually in my house. Yeah, we're... we're we're taking it home. We're taking it home. We're style. taking it home. Yeah, and we just thought, why not? You know, we wanted to be comfortable for this one, and my home is comfortable. It is a very so. cozy home. It's it's all good. super luxe couch. No, but, yeah, it's, this couch is cheap as shit, bro. I got yeah. this from like some online thing for like three hundred pounds. Really? Yeah, this is a cheap ass sofa. Damn, it's banging as well. Yeah, honestly, um, I don't want to say it on here because. I'll give you the website. Yeah, <laughs> give me the give me the plug. <laughs> give me the plug. The sofa plug. Yeah, but cheapy cheapy. I'm not yeah. I'm not investing like five grand into a sofa. Are you crazy? I got dogs and cats. Yeah. My cats will <laughs> my cats will scratch up this shit. My dogs will like Mildred, she's like a diggy diggy yeah. in the sofa. Do you know what I mean? But it still looks like good quality as well. Cause you can't I know you hate this. Ugh, I shouldn't do even that. Even the way you rub that. <laughs> <laughs> just a side note like i cannot stand velvet the feel like i even you... sitting here i just if i sit perfectly <laughs> still it's fine but the minute i like i'm not even Do you want me to get you a towel <laughs> no, it's down. all right i'm not that precious about it but honestly it makes the inside of my bum feel funny oh see you later meg meg was like fuck that <laughs> Velvet girl through and through. But these, I won't do it again, but these sofas, they're very good for like wiping down. I think this material is good. <laughs> <laughs> I've got dogs, bro. Why does your mind have to go straight there? Because straight to the jizz. It's got to. It's got to. <laughs> jizz or nothing. But yeah, it's good for that too. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, let me have a sip of that. Yeah. Refresh my palate. You alright, baby? So, um... While we was out in the States, Quiet in Set came out. What's that? Quiet on set. Not Quiet in Set. I was like, what is that? Quiet in Set. Quiet on Set came out when we was in America. Yeah? Yeah. That was crazy, man. What is that? The Nickelodeon show. 
oh, the thing that you... Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? Is this a comedy thing you've yeah. done? Am I meant to know about yeah. this? Am I a bad friend? Well, oh, Shall I yeah, just play just, along? like, watched it together, <laughs> but uh, whatever. Yeah. I was dipping in and out because I was working. Yeah. <clears throat> but yes, the... What's it called? Quiet on set. The Nickelodeon nonce yeah. scandal. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely fucking mad, bruv. That was really... And I didn't even watch all of it. So, like, to put it into context, we were watching it at the tattoo shop. And Jen was watching it in the side room. I was tattooing, so I was like dipping in and out, but kind of getting engulfed in what was going on when I, because how can yeah, you and not? then because we watched the last episode, we watched the last yeah, episode, episode together. four at home. Drake Bell, what a poor guy, man! Jesus. And also fucking just like the biggest respect to him to be yeah. able to like come out in such a huge platform to be such a huge um, celebrity and. Um, be that like honest about what happened yeah because that's like i mean it's just so unfathomably unfathomably dark like what happened to him is not it's and just it, yeah. i think you know these situations situations are always horrific but like for i think for for men to be able to talk about these things openly honestly is, and especially because it was done by another man because you know you hear those stories of like school teachers shagging their kids and like boys are always like oh i wish my teacher was like that and it's like we well, didn't but like you don't but like i think something about like a man like when you're a heterosexual man as well and you're not it's just the all very very, it was just so very d- d- a lot of shame to be surrounded by that i think you yeah know? so absolute like fucking inspiring props. and props to him for being able to do that and everyone on that program just because for real even the people who like weren't necessarily like molested or assaulted like to be able to talk about this is still a huge thing especially oh, definitely because these sorts of people still run hollywood they still run these rings and these media yeah. and these tv things so it's like they could put their you know, they could put their whole careers in jeopardy and a lot of them did. And I just think it was such an important documentary to be made. And I'd always heard things about Amanda Bynes because... Yeah, cause I obviously, mean, poor, like, f- poor fucking thing, you know? Yeah, like, I, I knew who she was from being, like, a child star. And then, obviously, when she had her, like what i could only describe as psychosis yeah yeah um probably just from all the abuse yeah. and then using drugs exactly to, combat. to cope with it yeah and, exactly yeah. just the the text which is shit quite, a, people yeah, it's quite do. a classic pipeline isn't yeah it? yeah and then just to, ha- to have like paparazzi and all of that chasing you is just like i'm just like so sick of this like hunger people have for damaged women it's so mm. old like because obviously I, I do think that the world has come along somewhat, you know, it's because around the time of Amanda Bynes, it was like Lindsay Lohan and Paris Hilton, Britney Spears, Amy Winehouse, like all of these like troubled women, um, like the people just could not get enough. And obviously the paparazzi are going to go where the money is. Do you know what I mean? And if the money's on hounding these poor girls and because like you need to take into account how young these girls are as well at these times you know what i mean and it's like they're going through like adolescence and some of the most pivotal moments of their lives in front of the whole entire world where everybody can have an opinion and spectate on they should be doing this they shouldn't be doing that and then coupled with you know like parents who probably don't have their best interests at heart as well you know their parents are just thinking about the bag at the end of the day yeah when that bag starts coming in especially if they haven't had it before you know like it's yeah it's really well that's the thing i think that's like so troubling for me is like it's with these like the way these executives and these people work they do tend to bring like they they go for the underprivileged families do you know what i mean they go for families that maybe have don't come from a lot look at amy yeah exactly it's like these families don't really have a pot to piss in so obviously like if there's this glitz and glam of hollywood and you're you know basically your kids are going to be able to pay up buy a, a whole house and pay all the bills and you're not going to have to worry about putting food in the stomach or anything like that ever again. Mm. You know, you get pulled in with that. But then <coughs> I think they get blindsided by what the actual cost of that is that you're... And because, like, I mean, 
back then there was really no safeguarding. Nobody had to have a DBS check or anything to like work with kids. Well, look at what's the oh, sorry, you know what the worst of names? What's that guy called again? Brian Peck. No, the oh. the, the the guy that came forward in Drake the, Bell. Drake yeah. Bell, yeah. The story about him and his dad. Oh my god, don't like uh, his that, dad. <sighs> that man, I for like. I love that man. Yeah. He, and I just feel so... Literally. So, like, obviously you feel so bad for everyone in this situation. Yeah. But I'm not even a parent. And to think that, like, this is all... You see everything unfolding yeah. and, like, the control is taken out of your hands. Exactly, because this person has massively manipulated the situation and you know damn well that this person is not okay and not behaving appropriately. And it was the bit for me when... Drake said that he told his dad that Brian's been sent down and he's like, oh, I'm so glad he never got his hands on you and stuff oh. like that. I was just like, that literally is like and then the, the worst nightmare. that Drake must have felt in having to tell his dad yeah. actually. No, it was me it that, was it me. Happened, that it happened to. Yeah, it's just honestly like props to everybody that came forward in right. that. Um, I think and what's his, the guy that was what's the the nonce guy called Brian Peck Brian Peck yeah I hope that guy rots bro. yeah well he's out and about fuck off he did I think no he, he's working back in Hollywood isn't he yeah well or no, was that, no the, that the, was, he the, was he went to the sweet life of Jack and Cody afterwards to do some voiceover but then when everybody kicked up a stink and was like why the fuck are you letting a nonce work on another kids TV show then they they took out his voiceover and hired someone else but it's like why would you even hire the man in the first place. Right. And also... Because they, they've been covering it up for years. Yeah, because I, I, I think it up. He, did, he only did a few months in Maybe. prison and had to sign on a register. And it's just like... And didn't he not... He didn't even sign, did he? Or something? I swear there yeah, was... Yeah, he's, he's... So what it was, it was when he had the court case, loads of stars came forward to his defence and wrote him character references. Yeah, I remember that bit. Yeah. Wow. And so he, I think he only done like a few months in prison and then he, he's, he is on the register, but he's out. And he and still about. worked, and he was still able to work with children afterwards. Yeah, he was able to work with children, but what not, I don't fuck? think anymore. Because like, obviously now I think there is a lot more like safeguarding and stuff like that. And I mean, certainly probably after Quiet On Set, I would say people are making more of an effort to yeah. to make sure kids are, are well looked after. But I mean... It's, it's fucked how a documentary has more impact. Like And people actually saying, the, I'm not okay with yeah. this. This way this person's behaving is making me feel uncomfortable. But then also it's such a culture of fear because it's like, obviously as, as a child, you're having this amazing time with like all your friends and, you know, your, your job is just to have fun essentially. But... You don't want to, you don't want to lose that, so you don't want to actually speak up and say anything because you don't know if if you could if you speak out you could be cut from yeah. from what you're doing, you know. Yeah, no, the way that they the way that they were able to manipulate it, yeah. it was just like especially for children, it's like you take them into the fucking Wonka factory. Exactly, and then you're like, well, if you say anything though, it can all be taken away from you because that's what happened with um, Brian something and his mum because his mum was like this shit is fucking weird. And because she was speaking out about it, then they took him off the show and that really damaged their relationship. Pretty much until the documentary came out, then they've come back together. But for his whole life, they didn't really talk because of that. So How mad sad. is that? <clears throat> so, so crazy. So sad. Because I think like when you're growing up and you're watching this stuff, like this shit don't even occur to you. Do you know what I mean? It's no. just like, you're watching it and you're like, oh my God, that must be such a dream to like... You know, just me? like get slimed every day or like throw pies at people or, you know, just like work on this crazy sketch show or something. But that... you, we also like, I'm sure the kids who were shooting it, the actors and actresses, but also like us watching it, like we didn't necessarily, we we're watching it with kids' eyes, right? Yeah. When you watch it with adult eyes, like I didn't watch these programs because I'm a little bit yeah, too old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, like when they when they ran all the um real like all the clips of like Ariana Grande yeah, cause she was in the it right water over, yeah Just she was like, in Victoria these like hyper sexualized yeah. situations and like you can you can tell like the guy had a foot fetish because there's all this like weird foot stuff yeah, being written and yeah. it's like 
okay we get it like if you're a quentin Tarant- like not i'm saying i'm not saying quentin tarantino is not problematic do you know yeah. what i mean but like yeah, if, but you're, if you're making an adult film then you're making an put adult what you film want in it. yeah yeah and it's like got, it's got age restriction these are adult actors they can like actually consent to what they're doing and understand the nuances of what they're doing but also when you shoot a film like that and there's some sort of sexual nature to a scene or a sex scene you have specific people whose job it is to be there yeah to be a coordinator yeah, between yeah. the two people having the sex scene yeah. to make sure that everyone feels safe yeah exactly. everything's safeguarded um everything every sheet is where it's meant to be exactly you know I mean? yeah. but when you're like you know like it uh dropping in these like horrible disgusting sexual undertone like um storylines or like quirky jokes or whatever you want to like like cookie cutter it as like there's none i'm sure there's none of that there set up because there's nothing se- of sexual nature written into yeah, the show exactly so upon appearances it's just like oh silly foot joke but it's like it's just this dude no. this creepy dude and his team who are all like yes men and paid off or yeah. whatever or aren't are like pedophiles themselves yeah like, because birds of a feather stick together exactly i'm sorry but and they fucking do bro. yeah these these pedophiles and child well it's always a are, ring in it there's always a ring yeah because they have to cover each other's backs exactly and they, they have and to get operate each other access yeah and, yeah and have to operate in like an a pu- like a public space in a way yeah. or like in these open spaces shared spaces um so they have to have people who can you know vouch for them exactly get them in the places yeah because i think like because i I don't i watched um dan schneider actually did an interview i think it was after the third episode aired and he's just like i just really felt like he took no accountability whatsoever like obviously he apologized somewhat but what essentially he said was like I wasn't the only adult working on this show. Like, my jokes were being checked by, like, 20 other adults that it got signed off on. So if they signed off on it... But it's not really about your jokes, about the fact that you're touching these children. Yeah. And you're doing inappropriate things and with these children. Also, uh, having, and you're grooming these children. Having people give, give you massage in front of kids and asking female members of staff to call in them, come and give me a massage and stuff. It's just fucking weird. What? He's gross as well. He looks like he's wearing a fucking fat suit. Bruv. He looks so like a clump. So gross. Yeah. yeah, he looks like... He's a nutty professor or something, man. Exactly. Yeah. Or like the old Batman, you know, the penguin? Yeah, the penguin yeah, guy. yeah. Ugh, just creepy yeah. and gross. Isn't Grimmers. it making me... Grims. But yeah, <laughs> really important piece of documentary film. Yeah. You know, and there's only... The only way that these things get changed is if films like this are made survivors are strong enough to talk about their story and then people you know they share that story yeah I and mean, it just so you people know, learn isn't exactly it? and it just also shows that like you know if like people are going through these things that you're not alone and you know like we are a lot stronger when we use our voices and when we all come together as a community to speak out against these things and you know if you've if there's things going on in your life and stuff like that, you know, never be be ashamed to use your voice or be ashamed to tell your story because it's always going to be beneficial in the long run for, you know, next people and stuff like that. If, you know, if we're like able to just talk about this shit. Yeah, like exactly. you say, you know, even for men and stuff like that, because... Well, the stigma about talking about like sexual abuse is crazy anyway for women. And I think there is another layer of <clears throat> complicated talk when it's happened to a guy yeah. because guys don't it's toxic masculinity exactly yeah. like you know in the times where things have happened to me i've always been able to go to my friends and talk in the safety of a group of women yeah and know that you'll be held at least within that safe space you know whether the wider community maybe not but you know your girl's got you and even to be honest with you, you know that your male friends got you as well. Like yeah. any time that something like that's happened to me and I've gone to my male friends and spoke to them about it, so empathetic and you know hundred percent. And I'm I'm not saying that men aren't empathetic but to it's other not, men. But it's, yeah, but but it's, it's a harder subject I think for, for men sure. to reach just because of the conditioning of like masculinity and all of that and just being a man and growing up and you know, like I would just imagine it would be harder to open up 
in that respect. I think so. I Especially because, like, you touched on the shame thing. Yeah. We all, obviously, we all have a yeah, shame. Yeah, like, nobody's saying that women don't feel shame because we are we ingrained do. with it. But I do think that, you know, there, there is a lot of shame around men just, like, being able to speak, speak freely about their experiences and about ways that they've been hurt and their mental health and stuff like that. You know, I think it's very important as well. And yeah, no, I think, important. like, you know, part of, like... Even when you talk about feminism and stuff, it's, it is intersectionality and like the whole part of it as well is, you know, toxic masculinity and stuff like that is it negatively affects men as well. And I don't think we should gloss over that fact. No, not at all. You know, it's, it is hard for, for guys as well in a different way maybe sometimes not always as hard but it is still yeah we're yeah. still trying to coexist as well exactly. together and know and learn about each other and it's it's hard sometimes but you just got a no judgment exactly open mind open heart yeah just be That's you it. know really just but if you are someone way. who has gone through any type of like abuse and you need someone to talk to, like reach out to someone that you trust, if that's your family, friends, co-workers, like, because honestly, like living with that shit alone is like, it's just not worth it in the long run. It's like, and also that shame is not warranted and it's not valid. So as soon as you talk about it, I feel it sheds a lot of that feeling of shame that you hold. Um, so yes, just from my personal experience, like that would be some advice I would give to anyone who's going through a rough time and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Always reach out. Don't suffer in silence by yourself. You know, just put yourself in like your loved one's shoes that, you know, like people would never want to hear that you're struggling and you didn't feel that you could come to them like problems what's the saying a problem shared is a problem halved yes exactly. and, it, and it's, it's true, true. Yeah, yeah like let, let's let share the load and I think that's very important and yeah just again want to say like for all the quiet on set people just massive ratings for yeah. coming forward and speaking so powerfully in your truth and for anybody that's going through anything like that at the minute you know we're we're with you and more power to you yeah. 100% should we talk about something a bit more positive? Yeah. Yeah? Is a baby. Oh, Reggie, stop wiggling. <laughs> say hello. You say hello? <laughs> hello. My name is Reggie. Oh, it's a little Reggie ASMR with a little licky loose. Lucky. A little kissy for the boy. I fucking love this boy. Yeah. Can we just talk about Reg for a minute? Wait, <laughs> who on? I'm talking to you. We want to talk about you. I fucking love this dog. I, I'm not against any dog. I love all dogs. But Chihuahua's like, I was never really like a Chihuahua girl. Yeah. But wow, did this boy change that for me? He really did. He's special boy. He's Jen's boy. But you're my He's, boy. yeah, just honestly the most funny and cutest little guy. He's got such a personality. I was like quite averse to chihuahuas and small dogs in general to be honest with you and actually dogs in general i've always been more of a cat person until that little fella came into my life honestly mm. even like so many people who like hate small dogs meet reg and they're just like all right he's don't get it wrong he's really got a stank a attitude yeah stank attitude he will bite your fucking head off and he is a s sexist yeah you're a scary scary dog yeah. when you're barking he can be a bit of a bigger but <laughs> Once you peel back the the layers, yeah, of he's actually a very sweet, loving, and kind little boy. You are a lovely boy, aren't you? Go and see your mummy then. And that's it. Yeah, and you're yeah. Maggie. That's your girl. <laughs> so I'm not staying. No, the once around oh, ways. Not molting been... season. Yeah, lovely. Lovely, lovely. Right, period. We yeah, talk about so... periods. <laughs> oh, <gasps> period, period. Oh, baby, it's not. I just punched Mildred in the face by accident. Period. Period. Sorry, Beans. Do you want? Should we talk about you two? We're going to talk about you later. We're going to talk about periods. You had a period once. You did. You had two periods. It was fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, this um next, we're gonna do like a period confessionals, right? This bit is sponsored by Day. Um who are our amazing sponsors yes big up day i love your tampons thank you for the cbd tampons honestly as a weed girl i love it but like as someone who does get really shitty cramps like 
my cramps are so painful and I do really feel like for me they take the edge off so yeah big up day for that big up day big up your bad cells yes um so <laughs> so period confessional I guess it's time to confess <laughs> confess your period sins um so <laughs> so back when I was with a certain guy right when we when we first got together um obviously I was like absolutely obsessed with him and we finally was hooking up and because he was not from London and he was like living with his sister while he was here anyway his sister was like quite bougie um and he was like oh come back to my sister's place so I was like yeah okay cool anyway we like obviously was just smashing like it was an absolute shagathon all over the place <laughs> I don't know <laughs> The men might get a bit alienated here. But when you beat them, beat it like that, yeah, sometimes you can manage to shag yourself onto your period, right? Yeah. Yeah, we've yeah, all yeah, been yeah. there, right? Yeah. Bro, I did not know that my period came. And so I, like, ha- ha- <laughs> because we've been, because we've been fucking so much, I, like, obviously didn't sleep that much. I woke up and I was like, fuck, I'm going to be late for work. So I just, like, chucked my stuff on and just, like, ran out the house, basically, Anyway, about like three, four hours later when he woke up, when he wakes up, he just sends me this picture of this massive blood stain all over his sister's like really <gasps> expensive white couch. <gasps> I thought you were going to say the bed. No, the couch. The couch no. Yeah, because that's where his bed was. He was sleeping on the couch. Okay, just side note. Who the fuck has a white couch? A bougie Australian that is just as a as a dog owner that is just not something that would never yeah she enter had my... a pug as well absolutely amateur not. hour yeah blame her on the pug <laughs> <laughs> she got her pee um but i was absolutely mortified obviously as you would be yeah that i i, I just didn't even know what to say because i was like how old are you as well i was like 23 yeah exactly so you're way younger and so you're like you're more kind of like embarrassed not embarrassed about your yeah. period but you're more embarrassed about your period around men especially yeah you know? yeah you're yeah. not like oh how are they gonna be and especially be right because he like so he, he it was him and his friend were both living there because they both were over oh, from australia no. and they're like Communal best homes. buds yeah and because we all work together as well and it was like, we were working in a bar in Shoreditch. It was very much like a bro ski mentality. So I was like, but luckily he was a perfect gentleman and didn't tell anybody. What um, did he say? Huh? I, cause like, what, what do you say? Did he, did he manage to get the stains out? No, his sister went fucking mental. What did he say to her? He just said that <laughs> I had a girl over and she bled all over the couch. Okay. She, went, she went mad at him. But also, she's a woman, so it was just like, okay, well, we just... Because it was just like the cover you thing. You best believe if I came home and there was period blood all over my couch from anyone fucking on my sofa, I would burn my sofa and whoever did it on the sofa. <laughs> I would be vexed, bro. But I'm funny about that sort of I shit. would be vexed, but also, I think, if it was not my... Like, if it was a brother of mine and he was doing that, I think if it was my family, I wouldn't be vexed. But if it was like... I'd be more... If, no if if my friend was staying in my house and they fucked on my couch and someone bled on it and it was just my pal then i would be fucking fuming i don't have like a little brother like that do you know yeah. anywhere i can be but like I, oh. I don't either I have a okay sister. but we can imagine yeah, yeah exactly it's like it. hypothetical brother. hypothetically yeah. yeah yeah maybe that is a bit better but yeah. yeah oh my god no yeah i would be i would be vexed but also <clears throat> my friends i'm know. glad that she was not that vexed because it was already <laughs> a humiliating moment the last thing i needed was like do you know what i mean yeah so it was yeah You're it was all fucking, over the creamy elephant yeah man <laughs> peep show reference for all my peep show fans out there <laughs> my guy um yeah so that's my period confessional um it's fucking grim i'll give it to you guys <laughs> i'm not proud of it not my proudest moment but here we are it's not the sexual fluids, the aftermath of any like sexual escapade, 
that's minging. The period part about it is not that gross. If anything, it just did her a favor and she saw it. Because just imagine if you weren't on your period, your pussy juice is still all over that sofa. Bro. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Not and my if... girl's coming home and she's like, oh, get oh. my feet up. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Lovely, that. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. Nest in her face into the sofa with the pug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think, well, not if he's doing his job right. You should be lapping up all them juices. Don't spare a drop. <laughs> Thank you very much. Depends how juicy he's getting you. Well. <laughs> Some of these juicy boys. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these boys know how to juice to the And juice to the nth degree. Yeah, that pulp is dry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little smoothie there <laughs> but we would love to hear um some period confessionals about you like funny stories things that have happened to you because yeah. you know anyone who gets a period will know that you know sometimes you get caught off guard like some things happen sometimes you gotta improvise you know i'd like to hear about that as well as your funny stories like what are your good improvisations when you've been caught short on your period like is there things that you've done like Give us the tricks, the hacks, the life hacks to yeah. periods. We want to know everything. Yeah, because you know sometimes you got to fucking go MacGyver on a bitch when you get caught in a pinch. <laughs> and especially, bro, some of us heavy flow girls, honestly, sometimes you really just like, you got to really hustle it together. All I've got is a... <laughs> A paper clip, a straw, <laughs> and a ripped up piece of sock. What can we do here? Like you can make it work. Exactly. Yeah. yeah so we'll make let's, it work. let's a period some, hammock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Yeah, we'd like to hear some some resourceful stories as well <clears throat> as your horror stories as well as your nice stories. So do send them in to podcast at ff tvcom hey. Um, we've also got a discount codes that we're offering with day. Um, so uh, use it. <laughs> it's uh, Pokes15. We'll put it below somewhere. Um, but yeah, grab yourself some stuff. Days like an amazing company anyway with the CBD tampons, but they're also doing a lot of different stuff with like women's issues and stuff like that. So just check them out. See, um, they're, yeah, they're a cool company. So yeah, they do everything from like cervical screenings to... Uh, organic tampons with or without CBD so they do really amazing stuff good company to check out definitely worth a look into and if you just want to try their their tampons like we said we've got a discount code pokes15 um, you can get some discount off your first subscription see if you like them and then yeah go from there yeah and then crack it on period period right we've got questions and answers questions. time I like this round. I'm really this I really like, round. Yeah, like this, this is a game show. <laughs> no, I re I really fuck with it and like, you know, we said like the email for the period confessional, but please like if you've got any questions or comments or anything, we literally love to hear from you guys. Again, the email is podcast at ff tv.com. So just send us stuff. We love to communicate with you folks. It's so much fun like reading your comments and like emails that we get sent and that leads me to um give a special shout out to Sam Moore three three zero seven. Thank you so much for your sweet message. Oh yeah that message was so sweet. Thank you. And thank you for your questions as well because they're actually really interesting questions. So we're just going to dedicate this episode to answering the questions that you sent us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much, Sam. Thank you so much. Appreciate we really appreciate you. it. Okay, let's go. let's go. Right. So, Grace, thoughts on body modif thoughts on body modifications in the cosmetic area, like fillers, Botox, cosmetic surgeries. Do you guys have any interest or experience with them? Yeah, I fucking love all that shit. Hell yeah. As a bitch who's getting older. Yeah, juice me up, baby. <laughs> yes. So we have some friends who are amazing um, aesthetics company called Alien. She is uh, Katie, the head nurse there. She's like probably the only person that I would trust at, as it stands to inject my face just because I know her and I, I think what she does is like... Oh, she's an absolute wizard yeah she can make yeah. you look like the most natural bitch yeah. or the most juiced exactly. up barbie yeah. like but she does it so fucking yeah, well yeah it's just like because i'm more of like a natural girly like i don't I, I like to have like we're trying to maintain exactly i'm not trying to add anything too cray cray you yeah. know because I've, I've only had my lips done once 
And I would, I would definitely do it again. And I've been thinking about getting some Botox. Because to be honest with you, I'm just like, I don't You're think there's any... Sh- yeah, <laughs> first of all, I'm 30 and I smoke 50 a day. So <laughs> I'm going to be looking like a piece of shoe leather at some point. <laughs> so maybe try and preserve it. But I think there's no shame in it. No, not at all. Honestly, there's such a stigma around it, but it's like, you want us to look good, but you don't want us to do anything towards looking good. So which one is it? But also it's like, what do you want? Like like you said, like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. But also like beauty is a spectrum and everyone forgets that. Like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. And like some people like to look <coughs> like us. We're just, we're not trying to grow old gracefully, but we're just not trying to grow old. Yeah. <laughs> But then there are other people who like the aesthetic of like really big lips, really strong cheekbones, yeah. you know, that kind of like a quote unquote aesthetic face, yeah. you know, um, and that's just like me wanting to look like how I look. It's completely fucking valid. Yeah. But also I think a lot of the people get super hyper fixated when they talk about like filler and Botox. They just instantly think about like, you know, those women in like the early 2000s with the really jacked up faces from the like. Yeah. All the botch jobs and people like injecting cement and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, stuff like that does happen, but it's really an exception to like it's not happening all the time yeah but like it's also like the the whole industry's changed right so there's like i think there's better regulations now you have to be a nurse to do that stuff yeah before you could just like get a beautician's license which is easy as being get a tattoo license which is fucking easy yeah so like i remember the first time i've had my lips done um i've had fucking loads done if i'm honest with you i've had so I had my lips done by this like non-medical person, person. Yeah. <laughs> and I got this like little duck lip um, and I, yeah, it was, it wasn't the best. Like I yeah. look at some photos and I'm like, whoa, you got that fucking shit lip, babe. But then Katie, she, she sorted me out. She dissolved all the filler and then she literally just put like a very small amount just to kind of re because when you dissolve it it dissolves the filler but it also dissolves the natural collagen in your lip so if you had small lip before you got smaller lip after. get out i didn't know that <clears throat> yeah. so she kind of just like plumped me up a little bit again. yeah Do you yeah. know what i mean just a little lasting plump yeah exactly yeah. but botox i get and Profilo, I fucking love Profilo. Mm. That's like, a, it's like five injections on each side. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. My cat, I'll tell you exactly what that is. My cat is upstairs. He's just jumped off the top of the boxes, which makes a thud and it sets all the dogs off. So sorry about that. Just barking and fucking shit up. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, back to the aesthetics. Like I've had, I've had Botox. You I've had my lips. Profilo. Had Profilo. It's like a hyaluronic acid injection into your face, which like is an amazing moisturizer. And for someone who's like, someone who is in their fucking thirties and still gets acne, like that shit was a game changer for mm. me. Um, Cause I've always had really bad skin. And Botox is also good for that, but also keeps you wrinkle free. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I fucking love that shit. I'm well for it. As long as it's done by, you know, people who know what they're doing. Because obviously that shit can be dangerous if it's not. Yeah. Like always check that you're going to a reputable place. Don't yeah, just be going to any girly on Instagram. Like <laughs> always make hey, sure. Girly. <laughs> yeah. Hey, babe. Yeah, I haven't exactly. spoke to you for a while. I need models for my Botox. <laughs> like, no, I'm all right. Botox should not be £30. No, like, I feel you. I think if it's cheap... It's not even that at cost price. Yeah. If it's cheap, it's too good to be true. Just take it as that. You're putting shit in your face and your body. Always just be careful with these things. I think as long as everybody's doing it in a safe way, there's not really a problem. And I also just think it's not your fucking business. Yeah. Mind your business. But also there's like loads of stuff that they're doing, which people would never know. Like you can do like um, a non-surgical rhinoplasty. Yeah. With filler. And so like people can completely change the shape and yeah. of their nose. Which is really nice. Like, it's firstly more cost effective way to do it because not everybody can afford to just have a nose job. And maybe someone doesn't try it out yeah. and be so permanent, see, you know? Yeah, exactly. And also it's not like, it's not as invasive because, you know, having surgery is a big thing. Like, I think like in in our, in the culture in general, there's a lot of just like surgery is treated as quite casual. But at the end of the day, like 
there's a lot of complications you can have with surgery as well it's always good to be aware of the risks that you could be taking yeah of course and i think like fillers and botox and stuff like that is a great way to to get results without you know having to go under the knife for sure yeah and obviously there are still risks but if you go to the right person like they're going to explain all of this stuff for you <coughs> there's usually some risks with anything you listen do. Do you getting a mean? tattoo has risks getting a piercing has risks Exactly. Or like any any Walk modification, the shop. Or, yeah, <laughs> that has risks. Yeah, any modification that you're having on your body comes with a set of risks. So you know, always just weigh up the pros and cons. But I think you know, surgery and stuff like that. I think obviously there is a lot of like <clears throat> societal pressure that does come with it. But I do see it as quite similar to any body modification. Really, it's just customizing your character. Um, so, uh, this question's for me. Jen, do you Let think- me ask it then. Okay. <laughs> okay, now. Where am I, where am I reading from? Professional. <laughs> okay, this one's for Jen. <laughs> <laughs> do you think there's a line in comedy that shouldn't be crossed? I struggle with comedians sometimes because I can't find racism, homophobia, misogyny, etc. funny. What are your thoughts on what is and isn't acceptable in comedy? Where's the line for you personally? So this is a bloody great question, Sam. Yeah, again, you've smashed it. <laughs> um, so I think for me personally, I'm totally on the same page as you. Um, I do think there's a line in comedy. I think I'm going to upset a lot of the anti-woke mob people with this, but I don't really give a fuck because I just think like there's ways to be dark that's not shitting on people um i think like a lot of the like really great dark comedians are people like life is dark enough anyway yeah without having to like shit on a whole group of people who are like oppressed in their daily life yeah and i think if you're verge if you're leaning on racism or misogyny or homophobia if you're making somebody oppress the butt of a joke then i think you're a shit comedian to be honest with you and i think it's it's a bit hacky yeah i don't think that those jokes are necessarily smart um no if you've got to rely on someone's struggle to make to jokes. make a joke yeah because also i think that you're there's plenty you need of to get ways some to self-esteem as well if that's yeah. what you're leaning on is shitting on other people and like obviously there are like I I do personally like dark jokes, but it's got to be done well, people. Because I'm, you know, coming up through the open mic scene, there is a lot of, and I hate to say it, um, like white guys who will come to an open mic who are doing like their third gig, who are just saying the most dirty material, <laughs> like really really dark, but like not in a funny way. Almost feels a little bit like a confession, and I just think. If you are like a fledgling comedian and you want to like get started and you think that you want to go down a darker route, learn how to write an actual joke first mm -hmm. and be funny and then you can take it from there. Don't just go straight for the dark shit. We've heard the Jimmy Savile jokes, people. We've heard them. Yeah. It's happened. Maddie McCann heard it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's not a Maddie McCann joke or a Jimmy Savile joke that I've not heard. So just... Time to lay it to rest. Yeah, then. let's lay it to rest, man. That really, you know, fucked up a lot of people's lives. So um, just be better, be smarter and be nice. Right. Just be nice. That's some good advice. Yeah. So that's my two pence on that. <laughs> that's my um, hot take. So uh, should we do one more? Yeah. Uh, okay. Wondering if Grace would be willing to share her nose gauges story, stretching them, sewing them up, repiercing, etc. Are you curious about any other body mods that you haven't tried yet? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So... I, when I was in my early 20s, it's when, when, from the age of like 19 to say 24, 25 is when I did like all my modifications. Um, and in that time I got my nose punched. So basically what that is, is they like cut a six millimeter hole in your nose and then they stretched it straight to eight and yeah it was <laughs> it was a very um 
it was a, it was an intense experience for a few reasons but like I'm not gonna lie I have never been coerced or persuaded or talked into any of my yeah. tattoos or no, modifications. you're very headstrong that, I'm very yeah. headstrong like everything I've done I thought I like don't get me wrong I've probably been in some not great states of mind if I look back in hindsight in those periods of my life but none of the there wasn't a puppet master like no yeah. not don't get me wrong there was definitely a puppet master in my life but as far as my my modifications yeah. were at that time like I was making the decisions for myself and I wanted to get what I wanted to get and I thought about it for as long as I wanted to think about it but my nose was just one of those things it just came about and I have to be kind of vague but it's not really something that in hindsight, I feel like I necessarily consented to. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it happened. Yeah. And I punched these, I had these holes punched in my nose. And it was almost like I went into this state of like denial about not liking it mm. because i was like this well, is gotta rip it now yeah exactly yeah. and as far as i knew as well at the time i thought it was irreversible yeah so it's like i've got this now i'm gonna have to learn to like like it and learn to like love my face um with because it changed my like i look at pictures of myself especially yeah, it looks really di- you look <clears throat> really different it, i look so different it really changed the whole way I look my my nose is a completely different shape and it just didn't look right didn't suit me it was not something I was happy with and after a few years I I met a guy called Matteo who's an um I don't think he does it anymore but I'm I'm not sure but he was this like um he made jewelry like uh big gauges for like ears and noses and because he was like part of the body modification scene in California so he made me he made me these um nose plugs made out of obsidian and rose quartz like really beautiful yeah and then I was like if I leave because there was times where I just leave them out for periods of time as well where I wouldn't sleep with them in and things like that because I was wanted to see how much they would shrink yeah but it's not like stretching an ear where like you're stretching skin that's already there like I removed like (laughs) <laughs> yeah it's not there i cookie cutted yeah you know, it's not there a chunk anymore. of my nose mm. out so it's not there anymore it's not growing back <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> you know i'm not like yeah. fucking wolverine right? yeah. just like regenerate <laughs> unfortunately um so yeah he ended up making me some smaller plugs they never really fit that well they were always a bit loose because i wanted i asked specifically them for a slightly smaller yeah, size to try and see if it would because yeah. what i noticed was when i wore small jewelry it didn't really change the sh- it just filled in the gap that was there but because we'd punched the hole and then and stretched, stretched it, it immediately yeah. we'd like we had um morphed my nose yeah right so when i didn't have that eight mil jewelry in there it didn't morph it as much yeah so anyway i had these plugs for years and didn't like them but was living in this state of denial and you know us women are really good at that (laughs) (laughs) but anyway there is this incredible woman from the body modification scene called farah she's called farah fucking flawless shout out farah um she is an incredible pioneer in the body modification world um she's was one of the first people to ever tattoo their eyes oh, like wow. she was the guinea pig essentially oh, damn. okay cool so there was a guy i was with and he essentially um invented it and i was i would assist him when he was in london as well um but the first eye tattoos that he ever did he did them on farah um and yeah she she basically because she's in the body mod world and she's so enthusiastic about body modification (coughs) Mm. she posted um this nose reconstruction so there was a guy exactly the same nose size like um gauges that i had eight mil um this is frog everyone (laughs) hey froggy um and she posted a reconstruction where this guy had had his nose sewn up by this uh, body modification artist called Brian Decker. This guy is um, from New York. And that fucking changed 
the game for yeah. me that day i'll never forget i cried bruv yeah. i was like so Fake overwhelmed yeah. yeah and i was like because i i know there'll be people watching this being like don't drink my water i'm actually thirsty <laughs> There'll be people watching this being like, why didn't you go to a doctor? Why didn't you go to a surgeon and get it done? Like, there is a kind of, I come up in the body mod world, right? So don't get me wrong, I'm not against surgeons. Like, if I broke my leg, I'd be like, doctor, doctor, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> but when it comes to, like, body modification stuff, it's like, if you're in the body modification you world... Keep it, you yeah, keep it in-house. Yeah which, yeah, which is problematic yeah. sometimes, but sometimes but it's, it's also not. nice as well because you're dealing with people that understand... <laughs> everyone hold your water yeah. Fox here. you're dealing with people that understand what you've done why you've done it and there won't be like a judgment with that as well exactly yeah. exactly so i'd never thought about going to a surgeon because i'd also never heard of a surgeon who had done reconstructions of this particular thing and if i'm gonna do something i'm not gonna do it first time no i want like, to do it with guinea- something yeah don't get me wrong i have been a guinea pig like yeah. when i got my navel removed he'd never done a navel removal before so I have, I have been, <laughs> but to a body modification yeah. artist, which in my head makes you sense. Know, you know, it's like at least somewhat what you're doing. You've done. It's just, yeah, it's just yeah. my logic. It yeah. might not make sense. But anyway, like I saw this reconstruction. I instantly messaged this guy. I was like, hi, my name's Grace. I had this, um, I've had my nose gauges for like fucking five years now, whatever, six years, probably longer. I don't even know. But I was like, I hate them. And I would need them sewn up. I was like, please, can you help me? He was like, send me a picture of your nose. I'll see what I can do. He was like, yeah, I'm pretty confident that I can do this. Um, can you come? I was like, cool. I was like, where are you? And he was like, New York. I was like, cool. I'll First flight there, baby. I was like, I'll book a ticket. Um, so I did. I booked a ticket. I went there for like four days. I took Mario with me. Yeah. <laughs> my, <laughs> my, my, my Judy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. I needed, needed him with me. Um, Just to like, you know, one, this would also, I've only ever had uh, modifications from two other people before I got my nose done, right? So the first person um, split my tongue with someone I met through people I came up with in the industry and in piercing. And then through getting my tongue split with him, I met this other person who did all my, the rest of my modifications, but I honestly don't want to talk about him no, because you don't need to go I there. also had like a relationship with him and yeah. it was very, it was just fucked. Yeah. yeah not we'll some, leave that. Not something I can talk about. Yeah. Um, but also me going to New York and getting my nose reconstructed by Brian, I wanted to take my best friend Mario with me because also I've only ever had modifications done by either a person who is heavily vouched for by people in my inner circle of body modification at the time or my quote unquote partner yeah so it was like my relationship with body modification was so personal in that way going and flying out to just see essentially a stranger was like a big deal for me oh 100 percent, yeah but it was the best thing i ever did he was amazing he made me feel so comfortable he was so professional very clean and he just did a fucking incredible job he did your nose looks great thank like, you yeah really it even gave me a little no- little nostril lift yeah. which i was like okay honey yeah. i'm here <laughs> for this you know but it was a it was was a bit of a painful he numbed my whole nose but like the injections in my nose were pretty gnarly mm. but honestly i was so gassed yeah that it was just like whatever you gotta do yeah. fucking do it yeah, yeah. i was like i've been living with this th- and ultimately i know i did it to myself but i'd been living with this thing that i ultimately regretted and didn't like and i don't regret a lot no. like i'm not someone who lives with regrets you know but it was yeah it was like fuck i don't care how much this hurts like you can do it you can raw dog do this it. if you yeah, have to yeah, I don't yeah literally do it yesterday like yeah but yeah he sewed it up did an amazing reconstruction healed perfectly and <clears throat> after that i waited a couple years just for like all the scar tissue to settle but I'd always wanted to get my nose pierced again because I just think it's one of the most beautiful oh, it's so facial cute. piercings I love yes. a nose piercing yeah so adorable. yeah when I was able to pierce my nose again by Destiny in Heartless in LA yeah. big up Des thank you so much she's done two piercings on my nose uh over the past year and honestly it's been so nice to have these piercing experiences again because 
not necessarily because there's things I wouldn't want. There isn't, there isn't, Maggie, do you mind? There isn't <laughs> things that I would necessarily be shut off to, but I don't know. I personally think for me, I might be done, but never say never. Yeah. But I want to like, be able to experience these yeah, it's things nice again. It's to, exciting. Even yeah. having you there, like holding my hand, getting my nose pierced yeah. in LA last week was <laughs> just like, it was so exciting, yeah. you know, because I fucking love this shit. Yeah. I find it really exciting. And to do it, especially in such a female dominated space, I've never, I've never had that yeah. before. Um, so it was, you know, it's something as simple nice, as a nose piercing yeah. was just so nice well, and healing for me. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like re rewriting a, a passage you know and just like actually just doing things in your own power with loved ones around you where everybody's like got your back and it's fun and it's girly and it's silly and it's just yeah. like it's just cute you know and not like so like hardcore yeah. ritualistic like yeah. yeah it's not like some weird blood ritual yeah um, being used as some yeah <laughs> sacrifice yeah <laughs> but yeah no definitely it was it was great um so yeah the story of my nose is it's probably been a bit of a, it has been a whirlwind for me, but um, yeah, everything happens for a reason. Exactly. And your nose is beautiful and cute and thank the you. piercings are lovely. Yeah. And thank you, Brian Decker and Des for helping me get my cute nose yeah. back. <laughs> the cute nose I've always wanted. Hi, mama. Come here. Let everyone see you. <laughs> come here, Froggy. Froggy, come here. My, uh, my Sphinx cat's here. So next week, what we got going on, we've got the uh, Under Your Skin. We're filming that on Monday with Jamali Maddox. Oh, so exciting. Yes, that's our friend. That's also a very fucking funny comedian. He's amazing. Yeah, I cannot wait to introduce you to. I can't wait I can't wait believe you don't know each other. Yeah. Like, it's going to be a fucking great meetup because yeah. you two are just absolute stunners of what you do <laughs> absolutely fucking gorgeous <laughs> but um me apart from that i'm going to worcester doing a guest spot in worcester never been there before so i'll let you know what it's like exciting i've heard it's very posh yes worcester <laughs> yeah, yeah they call it a city but i'm not convinced i don't think so i think it's a glorified town but <laughs> i've never been so so you cannot comment me. yeah and i'll be commenting next week when yeah. i'm back but yeah i'm gonna do that and um i'm just gonna relax next week in the early part of the week and then we're just working at me exactly you got any gigs next week yeah i've got um lgbt he he at the two brewers like i said earlier and then i've got um i think it's called kez's night on the 18th um which is at the orange room in stratford so if anybody's about come through come hell and yeah. say hello so, come through come, come through, through come through you know we got things to do <laughs> um but yeah that's it from us i think thank you very um, much for your questions keep them coming in we've really enjoyed answering them and obviously big up sam for all the amazing questions this week send us Anything you have about your periods, like we said before, any funny stories, any tips, um, let us know because we would love to hear them and we would love to hear your questions. Yeah. And if you're enjoying the podcast, tell a friend to tell a friend. Yeah. Keep listening. Keep like, liking. share and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> Comment away, people. We'll, we'll speak to you next week. Yeah. Have a Bye. good one. Be blessed. Bye.